September 30th, 2015, and with the release of these grainy images, it was clear Syria's grinding civil war had entered an entirely new phase. No longer just supplying Assad's government with arms or protecting Damascus behind its UN Security Council veto, Russia's full military involvement had begun. The Russian government had come to the conclusion that uh, Assad was going to lose that Assad was going to be defeated and Damascus would be overrun initially by a collection of uh, opposition forces, but in a short order by IS. And this prompted Putin to, to act. It worked. Although Moscow insisted it was hitting ISIL, far more often it struck the rebels exacting the heaviest losses on Syria's army. Russia's bombing slowed Assad's military setbacks and allowed him to go on the offensive. Then, last November, a hitch. Turkey shot down a Russian jet Ankara said had entered its airspace. It took months for diplomatic relations to be restored. But by March of this year, President Vladimir Putin was confident enough to announce the mission was complete. In reality, Russian forces were there to stay. Another of the Kremlin's main objectives in Syria was to force the United States to acknowledge Russia as a key power broker in the Middle East, a force to be reckoned with, negotiated with. And in this too, Vladimir Putin was thoroughly successful. In Geneva, Vienna and Moscow, John Kerry and Sergei Lavrov hashed out hopeful but flawed roadmaps for a political solution. Russia won some concessions from Washington DC, even a pledge for military cooperation against ISIL if September's Aleppo ceasefire held. It didn't. A mistaken US airstrike on Syrian troops was the first blow, then a UN aid convoy heading to Aleppo was bombed to pieces. The US says Russia's jets and Assad's helicopters were to blame, a possible war crime. But foreign policy analyst Vladimir Frolov thinks the deal was flawed from the start. The Americans are skeptical about getting into close military cooperation with the Russians, given, given the Russian record in Syria. And I think the Russian military were, at least some elements of it, were in agreement with Damascus, with the Assad regime. And they felt that the military victory was achievable. That particular deal was essentially preventing the military victory for good. Russia's air campaign has killed civilians on the ground. In August, the Syrian Network for Human Rights announced Moscow's bombs had overtaken ISIL for the number of civilians killed. 2,700 then, many more since. And with Damascus saying it started the ground campaign to retake Aleppo, it likely means the death of more Syrians. Rory Challens, Al Jazeera, Moscow.